Okay. Okay, dokie. I guess we're kind of there. All right. So we're going to talk about field formatters. Um, which is essentially how Drupal themes out its, um, its fields. Uh, before I wanted to get into this conversation, I think I had something to say. Um, regarding how I think of what should and shouldn't go inside of themes. So say for instance we have like, I wish I had something to show, but like we have a particular feature, right, that is very like theme like right? There's like a lot of JavaScript behaviors, they're very specific styles. This is like the default expected behavior of something, right? But since we apply these, uh, you know, this JavaScript or CSS to actually make this work, we kind of think that, oh, this should probably go on the theme because that's where everything goes, right, as far as, as far as that goes. But the problem with the theme, however, is like what if you had like a project that had, like say you had a site that had many different projects all running like in parallel and like certain features don't get approved until, you know, certain processes happen, but that stuff's already in code right? You've already finished this feature of sorts, and it's uploaded into the theme, and it's already pushed on production. You can't necessarily turn it off and on whenever someone says so, right? There's ways you can do, like, theme settings, but it is kind of awkward to wrap a bunch of conditionals around, like, you know, the work that you do in your template, you know, PHP or whatever kind of preprocessors you have. Um, so themes don't necessarily have the ability to, like, switch on and off like a module does, right? And then another thing, too, themes don't really have real strong dependencies with modules, at least they shouldn't, right? Because you can't really have a theme that's dependent on the module. You just kind of assume that they both are there and you kind of hope. And if you have that module turned off, well, your theme's going to break and you're going to completely widescreen. So because of those two things and, you know, probably a few other reasons, I tend not to put too much dependency on the theme itself. I kind of feel like a theme should be more of like a CSS type of theme where you're just swapping out some styles and you're, you know, making it look different, but not necessarily providing so much features inside of your theme that now you can't really switch it out when you wanted to. I mean, sure, you could sub-theme, but, I mean, then you're kind of overriding a bunch of other stuff that may not, may not make sense to this newer implementation. So, um, I tend to put a lot of, like, default functionality that has to do with theme stuff inside of the module wherever it's applicable, because then I could just, like, turn these things on and off. So hence, field formatters, um, yesterday I talked about the field API and uh, how you can create your own field types and then create field widgets, which are essentially like the form part of uh, the field data, right, how you input the information. So this is how we output the information. And what's really cool about this, and I, you know, I started off saying this is advanced theming because a lot of themers can really benefit from having the skill set. Many times we field, I mean, <laughs> we theme fields, right? inside of like what your your theme right in a pre-process node perhaps right and uh, a lot of the times the code that you put in there is not necessarily um, movable right what if you had like a certain feature uh, I don't know how you would theme like maybe you have like a string of text that turns out to be like a Twitter handler right and so the feature here is you want this to have like a little icon that has like a little Twitter icon and you want it to be linkable to the Twitter account. So you like pre-process that field and like wrap those, uh, wrap those like link tags around it to make it work that way. But you couldn't necessarily move that work into like a different site or like even a different place where that field is rendered, right? You have to, you know, reiterate your work. But with a field formatter, you can just basically put that work inside of like a hook and with the field formatters, you can like swap these things out uh, anywhere the fields is uh, displayed. So that could be like within the node, or it could be within like a teaser of the node. So different display modes, and then also within views, and maybe you can pop this out in I don't know uh, page manager inside of panels. 
So um, first, I guess I'll just go into like each one of these hooks uh, with implementing the field formatters. And uh, please uh, feel free to raise your hands and ask questions along the way to say I don't I don't get it what this is. So um, this is gonna be dealing with the uh, code, right? And uh, maybe there's a lot of themers in here. How many themers, like predominant themers, are in here? Okay, cool. Um, hopefully, you guys will be comfortable with uh, a little bit of code. A little. Oh, that sucks. I'm squeezing it as hard as I can. Yeah, sure. Someone has. Oh, okay. theming. In order to like be a really good Drupal themer, it's, it's a good idea to know the API a little bit. It gives you a lot more flexibility and a lot more tools to actually do things. Um, so this is one of them, right? So first off, what are field formatters? I probably already said this, but this is uh, Drupal's means of representing data on the display portion of the sites, right? And what's cool about these things is uh, that they're pluggable. Uh, not, I, I want to take that back. They're not necessarily pluggable in the sense that you can extend them like CTools plugins. But they certainly are swappable, right? You've seen the manage display tabs in the fields, right? Um, all those little options you have to like switch out how to display like a certain text field or text with summary, those are field formatters, so you can easily just swap them out. Um, you get a layer of configuration inside of your field formatters, which is actually really cool, right? Um, I mentioned that Twitter thing, right? You have like a little icon on the side. Well, what if you didn't want an icon, right? You can create a setting for that, so it's just like a little checkbox on and off. And this is cool because you want to be able to make these decisions. Uh, well, you want to be able to have the client make these decisions, and then you can like switch that off really fast without it really being like a huge issue. Like, don't you get really pissed off the client says, "Oh yeah, I want to change this," and you're like, "No, I worked so hard to make it work this way. It's kind of hard coded. It's going to really suck for me to go back and try to figure out where to change this stuff." So if you put a configuration on it, it's just easy as an on and off thing. Um, it is extendable via various methods. Um, so if you were to have that example that I gave, like if you were to do that within your preprocessors and your theme, um, how can you extend that at that point other than maybe sub-theming? There's really nothing you can do at that point to extend this. But through field formatters, you can actually go through like appropriate alter hooks like in other modules to change this stuff. And then even on top of that, your theme can still alter it, right? So you get extra levels of alterations if you needed them. And if it's done right, uh, you can reuse this in any sites, right? This is really cool, because you put this stuff in your, you know, these field formatters inside of a module, right? And this could be like maybe a set of internal tools you have for like your, your company, right? And you can pop these cool little features, um, you know, all across different sites. And, uh, you know, they're going to work uh, exactly how you intended without having to copy any code. So that's a very good plus. So the first step we do um, with creating these field formatters is we just have to define some metadata about the field formatter. And so we do this with hook field formatter info. And it's a key array. And the keys that you'd expect to be in there are label, right, description, so you have something to look at in the UI, field types, and this is where you say, like, all right, well, what field types am I supporting in my field formatter? And some types would be image, file, text, list, even, like, the custom field types that you created, if you saw my uh, previous talk, right? Those are the field types. And uh, multiple values, that kind of helps you uh, see if there's going to be, like, the cardinality of these. You know how you could have, like, a... I want to see one image or two images or like an unlimited amount of images in the field formatter or in the, in the field type. Right? You, can, you can show how many items you want to show. Uh, the multiple values is just a, um, a key that will help you identify whether if you should be using the delta or if you should just be throwing stuff. I'll show you code. It makes sense later. The settings this is the cool part. Settings right here in this uh, context, you're just basically uh, defining some default values so the rest of your you know, field formatter doesn't uh, puke when it's looking for a value that doesn't exist. Um, so I'll show you some demo code for that a little later. Um, so that's it for the hook field 
formatter info. Uh, and then the second part to this is actually rendering the data, right? So with Drupal 7, we have the render system where we're not really playing with like strings of you know markup anymore, kind of like pasting it together. We could actually like build a renderable array, which is just like components that eventually will get rendered into strings. But while they're arrays, we still have opportunity to do alters relatively easy because now everything's kind of in an array, right? Everything kind of structured into its piece. So when we're building our, you know, the, the render portion in the hook field format review, um, we're essentially building render arrays. So I guess a prerequisite to this would be get familiar with render arrays. And I'll show you a couple and you'll be like, oh, that's easy. Um, one thing you want to keep in mind with this, and I guess it's a little, it is a little out of context until you see the code for this, but uh, you want to return your rendable arrays as if you always have multiple values, right? In your field type, you can say, oh, I just want one value to display, or you only want one value to be possible inside of the configurations. But you should always expect that it could be an unlimited amount. You don't necessarily want to have in your code, if number of items to put into this field is one, do this code set, else do this other stuff that I would expect like many values, so I do like a for each, right? You should probably expect um, you know, multiple values all the time. And so um, one thing I got from uh, Larry Garfield's talk about the uh, design of APIs, aphorisms of API design, is he said that uh, n is the only number, right? Uh, meaning that an unknown number is the only number that you should expect. And one is just like a single use case of that. So it's good stuff. And then we have opportunity to do configurations and then configuration summaries and then actually do some pre-processing. Before I actually talk about these hooks, I actually want to show you some demo code to kind of see how simple it is to create one of these uh, field formatters. So let's go into some code. Um, I think I had posted on this presentation that I had this um, on my sandbox. So you guys can like pull down the code and see what it is. But I have a couple branches in here. So I'm going to check out the simple one. Oh, got to save. Okay. Okie dokies. And I need a browser. Okay. So I guess we can, actually I'm going to delete this one, start fresh. I'm going to delete content, damn it. Stupid drop down. Delete. Ugh. So hard. Okay, we're adding content type. So we'll call this content type um, chairs. Because we have chairs here. We'll save this and add a field. It would be like say we'll we'll do the Twitter example. So I'm gonna say Twitter name, and this is a text field, right? Because we're just collecting the string of text. Go ahead and save that. Save that. Oh, this is so boring. Save this. We'll create some contents. Add contents. Uh, this is chair one. And put in a Twitter name of Hellier. Cool. So we save that. So just out of the box, um, this doesn't do anything. Obviously, it's just a string of text. We can't do much. Usually, we'd want to, like, I don't know, process this and do some cool stuff in the game. But we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to go to the Manage Displays. And we're going to change this text type, right, to be, there's a formatter. Ah, here you go. FFE Twitter. Right. We go ahead and save that. And we're going to go back to that. Refresh that. And now, hey, we have a kind of sort of linked style thing. And when you click on it, it actually goes somewhere. All right. Hooray. So now that we have an idea what the end in mind, like what the end looks like, we'll go ahead and swap over to the code. Okay. The thing that created this was as followed. Make this a little bigger. Is that big enough? Mm -hmm. Cool. So, in our hook field formatter info, we're returning key to race, right? The key is going to be the machine name that you want. And then here we go. But here, again, we have the label and then the description. 
and we describe, oh, that's the wrong one. Where is it, where is it? Ah, this is the right one, so you guys don't get confused. Okay, so the label, the description, and then the field type that we're supporting. So this is important because you don't want to accidentally render this in an image type. Would it make sense? Right? So that's that portion of it. And then the second portion of it is saying for each items, even though I just have one, right? Uh, for each of these items, I want to create this render array. Right? So this is a render array in case you guys haven't seen them. Um, so what this does is this basically makes a link, right? So this render type is a link. And it's expecting some properties, right? The href value, and then it's expecting like the title value, and then like maybe the attributes are optional. I put that there for, you know, CSS. And then we're attaching the CSS file that goes along with it. So what this does, it just kind of creates a link tag with these classes and whatnot. And that's it. That's all it had to do, right? Inside of the href, the only tricky thing I put in there was, you know, twitter.com, and then the value that I had configured. That's it, right? But this is something you typically do on a preprocessor. At least in this case, you can move around to a different site. And uh, I mentioned you could do some configurations on top of this too. Um, I have another example that does this a little better. Where, where does this file go in your file This, which file? The dot module file? Oh, it's just dot module. Yeah, it's just a module, yeah. So, let's look at another example. Um, let's upload an image. Actually, no, not an image. Let's create uh, an audio file or something. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to create like a dumb little HTML5 audio widget thing. Right? You know, like an HTML5, it's just a tag. So we're going to do exactly that. I'm going to upload some MP3s. And let's save this. And let's configure this. Let's add some content. And I guess I'll just go back to this one and edit. All right, so I'm going to upload an audio file. Um, get some full tunes. What's new? Got some new music here. Um, I don't know what this is. I'm sorry. All right, hopefully it's not something too crazy. All right, cool, so we have an image file. Oh, not an image file, a song up here. It's an MP3. Again, it doesn't actually do anything, so let's go over to content structure, chairs, manage, display. And hopefully this works. Ah, cool. FFE audio. Save this. Come back here. Refresh it. Cross your fingers. Ah, I got something. Let's see what we get. Let me Okay, cool. So again, we could have just pre-processed this, but we did it inside of a field formatter, and now we can actually pop this into not just that one node to do the preprocessor. But you can do this with any node, anything, or well, any entity that does fields, right? You just like pop this in place of audio, or like an audio file or something. So that's pretty neat. Let's actually look at that code. So over here, again, it's just the hook field formatter info, right? Bam. And then the actual display of this. This is like super simple. I'm displaying an HTML tag, right? The tag is going to be audio, right? This is HTML5 only. Uh, the attributes I'm going to put in, this is what HTML5 requires, is a source and then the type so it knows like how to do its thing and whether if you want controls or not. So I just put, yeah, I want controls. Uh, the source, you know, since we are handling files, right, we have to go into the API and say, hey, I need a URL out of this, uh, you know, file ID. So this is what this is doing. And so we'll actually get a source. And Drupal already saves the MIME type, so we can just like swap that out right there in the, in the type. Cool. And if uh, it doesn't support that, it's just going to say your browser is inadequate. All right, so that is the first part to this. Let's go back to the slides. I had mentioned that there is a, legger, uh, a level, a layer <laughs> of customization. Uh, say, for instance, that the audio clip thing. What if you didn't want to have controls, or what if you wanted to autoplay, or what if you wanted it to do something else that you can't do with that tag, right? You want to create a settings form out of this. So in order to do that, you put you know hook file uh, hook field formatter settings form. 
And this is a uh, pretty easy stuff if you're already familiar with uh, the form API. And if you're not, then again, it's just like a series of render arrays too, but they're like form specific. And I'll show you an example of that. Um, and having these variables in place, right, getting the display settings is pretty much a standard thing you want to do. It's, it's implied. What's going on there? I show some about that later. One uh, prerequisite with uh, creating settings forms, and I don't know why this is in place, but if you don't provide some sort of a summary, right, uh, giving feedback of what you configured, the form won't actually display. Um, so with this hand in hand, we have to provide hook field formatter settings summary. And uh, this is just basically outputting uh, strings of text, saying like, oh, you configure this, and you configure that. That's it, just a string of text. And we'll get into the uh, hook field prepare view a little later. So anyway, going back to some code. Uh, let me switch branches again. Okay, cool. So now I have a little bit of changes. So um, with that audio field, right? Here is the settings key, and some of the settings I want to collect is you know what you want uh, it to say when you know there's no browser support for this element, right? So that's configurable. And then whether if we're going to allow the controls to be displayed or not. So that's what we have to put into the hook field formatter info hook. Now, here is the form that we have right here, right? hook field formatter settings form. So like I mentioned, you need this, right? You need to pull in what those default values were, right? And at this point, now this is the form API, right? We're describing a text field here. And this is pretty standard stuff, right? Putting your default value, saying like whatever, you know, the default was for the no support text value. What the hell is that? And we have enable controls, which is just a simple checkbox. Right, so now that we have it here, I'm gonna have to, I guess, flush my cache. I don't know, so Drupal knows it's up. Go back into the configurations, and here's some, I'll refresh this. Cool, do you guys notice that? Now we have a summary, and we have a little button here, just for the configurations. So click into that and loads up the form, very Ajaxy. And here are the two configurations that we wanted. So we have that for the no support text. And so we put that there to confuse people. And we have the enabled controls. Right, so you can turn this on and off. So I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to hit update. I'm going to go ahead and save. And you have that in place, but maybe your widget doesn't really know about it, your field format. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So your formatter needs to <laughs> needs to know about those settings. Um, this is a little updated now. Um, where are we? Okay. So uh, in the attributes, there used to be controls equals control, right? Because it was just hard coded. But I I took that out, and now we have. This little conditional here that checks if settings enables controls, and just go ahead and like add that attribute in there. Right, so now we have that flexibility. We don't have to go into code anymore. We just do that within the UI. So we have that there. Let's go ahead and refresh this page. It broke. I'm going to flush the cache. Ah, it's breaking. Turn it back on. Okay, let me turn that back off. Obviously, this is a, a bug in the spec with HTML5. It's far I didn't get it right. Um, but it would just not have controls, and I don't know what you do. Maybe that, it's a, it, that is in the spec. If you don't have controls and it's not autoplay, then what's the point? Right. There it is. So it works as, a, as it should. Good. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't remember if I had any controls with the uh, the Twitter thing. Let's go over there and see. No, I didn't add any anything in there. Oh my God, I'm so uh, disappointed. I was working on this uh, this field formatter, which is supposed to be like a demo. Um, it was a field formatter panorama, and the idea was right is that I wanted to upload an image, right, just a regular image that say it's like a huge panoramic picture of like a hotel room or maybe like just outside something beautiful. 
And what the field formatter would do is just load in like a jQuery plugin, right? And you know, grab the markup that's being rendered based on the FID, and like throw in some JavaScript. I'll say this tag, do like the panoramic thing, and what it'll do is that you'll just have like a little viewport, and you can like click and drag around your, uh, you know, your image. And so now you have like a 360, you know, demo of like a room or whatever. And I'm really bummed that it, it didn't come out. And uh, I'm sorry, I don't have that demo for you. But maybe I'll I'll have it done by the C tools. Uh, buff, and I can just like really quickly show you guys like it matters. Um, but what's cool about this particular module is that it's it's up on the uh, on, on sandbox on Drupal.org. So I think there's a link on the uh, on the on the presentation page that you know you can get there and just clone it and look at the example code here and just like play with it. And uh, maybe you'll see that panoramic thing on there. Uh, so cross your fingers. So I think that's more stuff in here. Um, all right. So along with the whole build of like creating this render array, like creating this formatter field and stuff, uh, there's an opportunity for you to do an extra hook to like maybe gather some more more values, right? And that's what hook field prepare view is for. Um, it's not too often you really need to do this. The only use case I've seen in Drupal at least is like when it's building like images, right? It uses this hook to load the files, right? Because you just have FIDs, but now you actually want to like load the file object or something. And that's it, right? Um, it's pretty dry. I guess it's more like for developers, but it's there if you need it. So, let's review the specs. Uh, review the steps. We define the field formatter, right? We return an array of renderable arrays. <laughs> and that's it, for the most part. If you wanted to, you can provide settings for it, which are pretty cool. And when you do that, you have to provide the settings summary to just say, hey, this is turned on or this is turned off. And then if you want to build some extra you know, stuff, you can do that as well. And I put in some useful, useful helper functions. Um, you know, sometimes it's not obvious what field types you have on your system, so using these functions, you'd be able to find that information. So I guess you just like DPM it or vars dump and just kind of like get a view, like, okay, this is all the stuff I have, and now I can actually like traverse through my arrays and do stuff with it. So nice little stuff. So uh, yeah, this was... Um, these slides were prepared for like an internal uh, training, and so we just kind of had like ideas for a workshop. We're like, what could be you know field formatter? Because people are thinking, scratching their head. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Um, but you know, like the first one we did a HTML5 audio playback controller. That's pretty easy. Uh, you can create an email address link, right? All you have to do is just pop in the email address. But when it gets rendered out, it's going directly to the mail to link, so it actually opens up like an email client. Uh, then we have like the link to Twitter thing. And I mean, if you had options and settings for it, you can like make it make it have like a different looking feel to it, just with the configuration. Um, you can totally make like a, a light box gallery for this, and I think I have a demo for this, but not in this laptop. Damn. Yeah. Uh, we're essentially just like pulling in like the JavaScript for like a you know an external jQuery library, and uh, you know just kind of going to town with it, and in, uh, in the images that you have, um, you know, create custom data from from timestamp and blah blah blah. But one thing that's like super, super important about the field formatters is, like, have you ever had a use case where like you need to design some or like theme something out in views, but then the client said, oh, that's a really cool, like say gallery, right? I want that on the node page, like my product pages, right? And you're scratching your head thinking, oh crap, I have to copy a lot of code. And even then it's like, it's not exactly the same structure. So I'm kind of screwed. I'm gonna have to maintain two different things. Uh, with field formatters, it's pretty slick. Um, if you create, like, say, a gallery using field formatters, right? Like, you're uploading multiple product images, and, like, maybe on the node display page, you have, like, like a series of images, and it's like a light box type of thing. You click it and it expands. Um, if you wanted that particular feature on a view, it's super, super easy. You just, like, you know, add in the field, and your, your, your field formatters that you've already created are going to pop up in a little select box. So you can choose that same exact code, and bam, it's right there on the view. Right? So you don't have to duplicate efforts there. It's pretty slick. And then I think Display Suite has integration with it too. Maybe someone here can. Yeah, okay. It's. <laughs> Hurrah, so that's it. Any questions? Jeremy. Um, so I'm still using Drupal 6, so what are the differences between 6 and 7? Nothing. The question was for people who are listening at home is uh, between Drupal 6 and 7, what are the things that I, sh I should be aware of? And uh, almost nothing. 
Uh, fields aren't core and they came directly from CCK. So CCK actually invented this stuff, right? It's already in Drupal 6, right? And I think the hooks are like identical. The only thing that's different, I guess, would be like the render array part when you're actually like outputting these render arrays because they don't exist. So you're just like outputting some HTML. I guess that's it. I have to look deeper into it. But I think that's it. Yes, yes, there is. It's widgets, right? That's the terminology that it uses. And widgets, uh, the question was, what is the, uh, the, the counterpart to field formatters? Um, and the, the answer to that is widgets. So like the input is, uh, it's gonna be a form, right? For the most part, if you're using like the managed fields UI. And uh, yeah, so you're basically in your widget, you're defining like all of the form elements that you're gonna expose to it. And it kind of has to line up with the field type and your field type could have multiple values or it could just be like a single text box or something. But if you created a widget for a single text box that did something different, like, I don't know, you've seen those toys that it has like a roller of like letters and you just kind of like pick out the letter by just rolling it. Like what if you did some sort of like weird jQuery thing and you just want to screw with your clients, right? You can do that and then when it saves, it saves us like just a straight text, right? But it's just, it's an alternative way of like inputting information, right? Oh yeah. Yep, yep. That's for the UI, and then that's when you get into like really interesting like dashboard type of interfaces where it's not like the typical Drupal stuff, but now like you have something really kick-ass to show to the client. <laughs> so yeah, field widgets, pretty cool stuff. So I'm sure you themers have a lot of questions. Now would be the time. <laughs> Cool, so this was kind of early, just like my last talk. Um, I didn't really time this well, and we're missing a demo. But I guess for the most part, eh, I'm kind of done. Another question, what's up? Yeah, I never hear anybody talk about this stuff, honestly. Um, but you can like actually dip into the code in the field um, module. Right? Uh, the field module in core has like a subset of modules like text and list and number and whatever, and they have these hooks in there, right? And then there also is like the field.api file, and you can like look for these particular hooks in there and just kind of gives you some default stuff. If you use TextMate, uh, you have, and, and if you have like the, the Drupal bundle, you can just do like hook field formatter view to tag and it just gives you like the default stuff that it just ripped out from like the API page. So you can like look through that and get like kind of good idea of what the structure should be like and just kind of edit it from there. Just the <laughs> Google Drupal TextMate bundle. Yes. Uh, another great place to look for documentation on this is the examples model. It has oh, yeah, lots yeah. of examples, including it does have a field example, which has all of this stuff. I have a question. Um, Go ahead. What's the difference, um, actually, what's the difference between, uh, is this more efficient than me, like, for example, say, I would put like, a page of uh, video links that, um, once you click on it, a live box office that shows the video that the image in the title, um, in order for you to create a question page, uh, you create a view of, um, of uh, the videos, and you have the title, you have the uh, URLs, and you have the image, and then you create a template yeah, I do. That really, really depends on your situation. Um, All the stuff that you uh, talked about, so the question was, like, if it's more efficient, uh, if this is efficient, like, when you're building views and you have, like, this really complicated thing going on. Um, it really depends on the situation, like I mentioned. So like with the field formatters, right, it's really only in charge of theming out the elements that are within that field type, right? But typically, right, when you're like uploading in, uh, like a video, it's gonna be just like a file, like, you know, a file type, right? And then you also have like the description type. 
and then you have like a title type and then like a URL type, right? These are all text fields, right? And this is kind of like what I discussed in my last talk, where we have like these four or five different fields that we kind of try to put them together, like if it's one thing, but really it's not. Right. And it's like it's a huge pain in the ass to actually make this all work, unless you have like a special use case where like you're maybe you're overriding a theme in views and you're like kind of mashing it all together. But even then, like what happens to the validation? What happened to like all this other stuff, like the codependency? It, like it doesn't work. It's, it, it's a hack essentially. It works, but it's a hack. So with the field, if you were to create a field type that had all the stuff that you mentioned, right? The video, the URL, the description, the title, any other kind of metadata that you want, and put that into a field type, you can totally put this into a field formatter, right? And have this all kind of put together. And then when you pop this into views, bam, it's already there. Because the field formatter stuff, it was already taken care of, and you can put that into whichever kind of display mode you want, into any kind of view that you want, right? Because it's all configurable. It's all pulling it from the same source. So at that point, it is super efficient. <laughs> But if you don't do the field type thing, right, and that's it, it's a little bit of work, right? You have to like do all kinds of like, you know, database schema stuff and define some validators. It is a little extra work. Um, if you don't go that route, then it's gonna really suck when you're trying to use field formatters and your view. Because some of the fields that you required, description, URL, they have nothing to do with the video file, right? So they have not, you know, there's really no coherency between the two. And you're gonna be forced to have like a single use case which is going to be, you know, theming out your view, and that's it. Which kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay, cool. So I guess I'm done. Thank you.